Hey guys, welcome to another episode in our video series, Writers MD, where we answer the top questions asked and the top questions that should be asked by doctoral students who want to write quality dissertations in six months or less. Today we're answering the question, how should my dissertation be organized? Before you advance any further in your process, it's very important that you understand how your dissertation is organized and what is required within each of the chapters of your dissertation. This overview will support you in your approach to, to your dissertation in an organized and logical way, allowing you to complete a more logical and well-organized dissertation. Of course, you can move things around if you think they should be reorganized, or if your institution or discipline requires you do things a very specific way. Nevertheless, you can use a structure that I'm providing you as a general guide and overview of how your dissertation should be structured. So let's get started by first exploring the title page. The title page, as the name suggests, is the page that requires the title of your dissertation. It should also include your name, the institution and department, in which you are currently studying, the name of your degree program, and the date of your dissertation's submission. Your institution may require additional information such as your student ID number or the name of your supervisor and specific formatting uh, of how your pages should be. Uh, so be sure to check out the requirements of your program and your institution prior to submitting. As you have to add the date of submission, uh, this is probably the part that will be completed shortly before the final submission of your dissertation. Then you have an acknowledgement. Uh, for most people submitting a dissertation, there are most likely a number of people who have supported you through the process who need to be thanked, right? Although this part is generally optional, you may want to record your gratitude to your university supervisors, your study buddies, your research, research participants, or friends and family who simply supported you along your journey. Again, probably something for the end of your project or something that you can add as you progress through your dissertation. Next, you have the abstract. All research papers begin with an abstract in which a short summary of the research is provided. This should be fairly short at around 150 to 350 words long, and it, it, in most cases, it should be written at the end of your research project so, so that you can fully state your topic and aims, uh, record the methods of research, and summarize the key findings and record uh, your conclusions. Next up, you have the table of contents. Although it might be hard to imagine, by the time you finish your dissertation, it's going to be a fairly large document. So uh, you want to write a table of contents where you list the chapters, the subheadings included in those chapters and the page numbers that each of those sections began on. Not only does this give the reader a quick overview of the contents of the study, but it also helps them to quickly navigate to re relevant parts of the study. Then you have figures and tables. If there are many figures and tables included in your research paper or your dissertation, you should organize them using a numbered list and record it in this particular section. So next up, you have the glossary. Uh, in the glossary, this is a section where you want to make sure that you help the reader to understand complex subject-specific language that is highly specialized and not commonly known. So here you want to list the keywords in an alphabetized glossary list and give a clear and concise definition of each word along with uh, sources that support that definition. Then you have the introduction. So this is the real start of your dissertation and is generally referred to as chapter one. In this section, you are expected to introduce the topic, provide background information about the problem, include your problem statement and purpose statement, record your key research questions and key objectives and give an overview of the structure of your, of your dissertation. For that part, uh, it's important that you take note of the outline that I'm giving you here and ensure that you consider the different ways of talking about the contents of each chapter rather than always saying in chapter one, I will, in chapter two, I will, and so on. 
the core purpose of your introduction is to tell the reader the what, the whys, and the hows of your research project to write it in an engaging and concise manner and to be sure to follow uh, the tips that I'm giving you on identifying the research gap and writing your problem and purpose statements. So next up you have the literature review, chapter two. The second chapter of the dissertation focuses on a review of the literature in relation to your area of study. This happens before you begin any research and its core purpose is to provide you with a deep understanding of the academic research that has already been completed within your focus area of study. In this section, you will use the literature review to address gaps that you will find in the literature, consider new approaches to the topic, propose solutions to unre unresolved problems, advance a theoretical debate, and show how your research will extend existing thinking. In chapter three, uh, you will focus on the research up for your project in this section that is normally titled research methodology or research method. For a qualitative approach to research, you will need to complete an introduction to your research approaches uh, that detail your research design, present your research questions, outline the setting and participants for your research, show your data collection, write a data analysis, and finish a with the conclusion of the process and findings. For a quantitative approach to research, you will again start with a complete introduction uh, to your research approaches and provide a detailed description of your research design. You will then present your research question and hypothesis to, and explain the population, the sample, and the instrumentation being used for the data collection, and then show the data collected, write a data analysis of the fin and finish with the conclusion of your process and findings. Uh, for a mixed approach uh, to research, this section will consist of a blend of the content listed above, starting with the introduction and description of your research design, then outlining the research questions and hypothesis and describing the setting and sample. So following this, the data collected should be shared, a data analysis should be written, and the section will finish with the conclusion of the process and findings. Then you have chapter four. In chapter four, you must present the results of your research. This section is sometimes called results and sometimes called presentation of research. Its structure is relatively simple. There is an introduction, a detailed description of the findings and a conclusion. The full sets of data would not normally be included in this section, but attached is an appendix instead. Chapter five uh, prob is probably the what, what I would describe as the juiciest and most exciting part of the whole dissertation process. It's chapter five. This is where you use your research to summarize your findings, make conclusions, discuss what you have discovered, uh, and make suggestions for future or further research before concluding the entire project. It really is your chance to explain what the results mean and why they matter, as well as importantly, highlighting what the results don't tell us and where the gaps in the knowledge and understanding still lie. The conclusion that you write at the end of chapter five is where you finally get your answer, uh, where you get to answer your research question. Uh, you give the reader a really clear understanding of your argument and you explain how your research has contributed to your field of study. Then after, after you do that, after you wrap that up, you have the references and appendices. Following uh, from on the conclusion will be the page or pages of references. There are most likely going to be hundreds of citations included in your project. So my top tip is to keep this list organized and up to date throughout your project or you are really going to regret it at the end. After your reference list comes the appendices. Only, only the most relevant research and data is included in the dissertation paper itself. So all of the other data and information that has been used can be placed in an appendix at the back of your dissertation. 
Hopefully uh, this session, this, this video has helped you to better understand the organization of the chapters in the dissertation and the other important features to include. As you write up your chapter organization, use this as a guide and remember to try to use variation in the presentation of your chapter's content. If you enjoyed this information and would like to receive 20 free videos of the answers to the top problems that doctoral students usually face while writing a dissertation, along with a free copy of the webinar where I have given important tips and strategies that could help you write your dissertation in as little as six months, please visit www.writerser.com free. And I also have provided that in the description below.